It is day 15 of President Bola Tinobu's presidency. After weeks of back and forth as to who becomes the president of the 10th Senate and Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Governing All Progressives Congress has taken it all. In a secret and open ballot system, Gotu Lapabio and Tajudin Abbas are to lead the 10th Assembly for the next four years. The former minister scored 63 votes to defeat Senator Yari who scored 46 votes, while Mr. Abbas pulled 353 votes to defeat other contenders. The new speaker has now promised to be fair and just in the discharge of his duties. I want to assure you today that I shall be just and fair to every one of you, irrespective of perceived differences. I shall operate a house that you will be proud of. I shall be guided by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the House rules. Our doors will remain, will be open for members of APC, PDP, Labour Party, NMPP, APGA, SDP, ADC and YPP. Under my watch, the 10th hour shall sustain and even surpass the gains of the 9th Assembly. That's my prayer. We shall carry out the task before us jointly. We shall introduce reforms and innovations for the benefit of Nigerians. Speaker of the 10th House of Representatives there. Now, other dignitaries who spoke to TVC News 100 this program are optimistic the 10th Assembly will surpass the achievement of the 9th Assembly. I believe that and I hope that uh, they will build on the work, the 10th Assembly will do all the work that we've done in the 9th Assembly, and that's a lot. Um, some work is unfinished. Um, I expect them to finish off that job. Constitutional amendment, uh, um, the issue of um, gender parity, uh, and so many other things. Electoral laws remains unfinished, um, even though a strong foundation has been laid. And I believe, um, uh, I expect the 10th Assembly to build on those things. And I expect them to, beyond that, begin to break new frontiers um, in terms of legislative work. The exercise, um, in our view, in which all of us are seeing, um, has reflected um, real democracy at play and party supremacy also um, across party lines you know people have shown um, that we all can work together right an election that has been very transparent um, that has reflected the views of all of the members elect and they've been able to choose their leaders in, um, freely um, justly and equitably right I'm indeed proud of them so transparent and open Nobody is untwisted. The National Assembly were allowed to have a free choice. At the end of the day, our party won. At the end of the day, Nigerians won. And the, this is the beauty of democracy in this country. And I want to assure Nigerians that the administration of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu is indeed a government of all inclusivity. Let's talk more about this. Joining me is a political analyst, Ahmed Mustafa. Thank you for joining us on the program. What is the reaction to the emergence of the party's choices? Well, of course, I think um, democracy won today. Nigerians have won. And um, I am sure that uh, we, we clearly saw this was, particularly with, with the Senate uh, uh, presidency, was a clearly contested. Uh, elections, one that was open and fair, and gave room for uh, the practice of democratic tenets. And of course, at the end of the day, Nigerians can be proud uh, that the Senate President has been elected. And you know, same same goes uh, for the speakership. There's no disenfranchisement of um, a candidate, and the, the voting was uh, televised live. And everybody, all Nigerians across what of life saw just how transparent the process was, and there will be no uh, arguments whatsoever about who. Uh, the eventual winners are uh, congratulations to Senator Godfrey Ababio and also to Arata and Rebutatina Abbas, who both whom I feel uh, will do justice to their uh, various positions. Now, Mr. Mustafa, before this election, it was more about religious versus ethnic considerations, but then it appears religious consideration had its way. How important do you think this is? Can you come again, please? I didn't get that. Prior to this election now, the considerations were ethnic and religious. But at the end of the day, it does appear that religious considerations uh, had its way. How important is this? 
Well, um, Nigeria is a multi ethnic uh, 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 religious and multi ethnic society, so it's necessary for us to balance uh, the views. But then again, I don't quite agree that the religious uh, sentiments too. I think it, it was more about this senators and the House of Rep members deciding clearly based on competence and who they thought were better qualified uh, to, to occupy those seats. I must say that everybody who stood in elections, who stood for elections today, were eminently qualified, but at the end of the day, one person had to win, uh, and that's what happened. I think the, the, it was an idea where the person who the crowd fixed the most uh, emerged as both president of the Senate and speaker of the House of Representatives. I do not think that um, religion played a major role, because if you, if you look at the voting patterns, uh, senators from across uh, the country, north, south, east, west, voted for Senator Fabio, and the same thing replicated itself, um, particularly with the uh, House of Reps. I think it was, it was just uh, Nigerians, uh, our representatives, speaking who they thought was best to occupy that position based solely on their uh, uh, competence. Yes, of course, uh, it, it looked better you know, for, for political optics to have a Muslim president, a Muslim vice president, and then have a Christian Senate president. It just, if it looks better, it feels better, it, it suits the narrative, but I don't think that was a major decider. In I think Senator Fabio uh, stands head and shoulders above uh, uh, his competitor today, and, you know, and that, that eventually uh, carried the day for him. Mm -hmm. And the winners are promised to be just and fair. How do you see them in the days ahead unite those who contested against them in this election and, of course, make legislations that would move Nigeria forward? Well, I'm, co I'm confident that the 10th Assembly will surpass the 9th Assembly because that's the future of democracy. We're looking, Nigeria is growing uh, in our national democracy and we expect that the 10th Assembly will do a lot better than what the 9th Assembly did. The 9th Assembly, I must give them credit for having laid a fantastic foundation in lawmaking, and I expect that the members of the 10th Assembly, having observed what the 9th Assembly did, will continue to build on those tenets to ensure that Nigerians get the best of this deal uh, going forward. Again, uh, those who consider against them, I, we are one big, JPC is one big family, I expect that they will come together and uh, work by it. Even with the President, uh, he has said specifically that JPC is looking to build a government of national unity, and I don't think it should be any different with the National Assembly. I expect uh, Senator uh, uh, Yari and, and those who contend against the, the, the new speaker to come together and form some kind of forum and ensure that at the end of the day, 200 million Nigerians are better off for the decisions that, that were made today uh, on the floor of the two houses. While the Senate went for secret ballot system, the House of Representatives, you know, went the way of open ballot system. What impact uh, do you think this choice of balloting systems have? on the conduct of the elections? Well, this is a delegate election. I don't think it had any, any impact. I think deliberations and consultations have been made long before now. Uh, I, I was privy to be, or privileged to be part of the consult, consult, consultation team for one of the candidates that emerged today. And I will tell you that uh, even before the elections were done, we were pretty confident that we we're going to uh, uh, win today. I, it, it wasn't any different from the results that we expected. Uh, it's the numbers are very easy to crunch, and so I don't think if the voting patterns had been different, would have affected the votes in any way whatsoever. I think the senators already had their hard set on who they wanted to vote for, and so were the members of the House of Rep who had already decided before uh, coming into the chambers how they were going to uh, cast their vote. I don't think these men are cowards or uh, men who are scared to make decisions publicly. I don't. I have. Absolutely no um, thought as to how, if the, result, if the voting pattern had been different, how it would have affected uh, the results of the elections today. I think everybody can go home proud and happy to have been part of this very uh, clean, clear, and uh, fair process. Mm. Mr. Mustafa, were you surprised that uh, some people still went ahead to contest against the party's choices for the presiding offices? No, absolutely not. Um, those who, who stood for elections today had made it absolutely clear that they were going to run for elections no matter what. And it's, we must be clear, it's good for our democracy. It, it wasn't a case where a, a, a single candidate was forced down the throat of senators and House of Rep members and they didn't have a choice. A choice was presented and they clearly made that choice. And I'm sure the party is not going to hold anything against them. The ABC is one big family. Uh, it's an internal family affair. And it has been uh, elections have been decided. It's time now. Building. I, I, I understand, from my understanding of how politics is played, 
this way we will come together and they are probably having uh, uh, celebratory dinners as we speak in, in, in the same venues and they will move ahead as one big family and beyond the APC is the fact that the House of Reps and the Senate are a community of leaders who should be able to resolve their differences and move, help move the, the, the country forward. So, and by no means surprised, this has always been the tradition to have um, these elections hold. It would be, it would have been uh, somewhat of a uh, an underdog story if somebody had been imposed with uh, and every other person who had ambitions to run uh, forced to step down. Again, it's a huge uh, building block for our democracy that people can come out without fear to, to uh, challenge the party's position and try out their popularity. Unfortunately, today, uh, it didn't go their way. We don't know what will happen next time. And it's best. Nigerians are better served if the democratic processes are, are followed through. Mm. And while the School of Thoughts believes the emergence of the party's choices would make for a harmonious working relationship between the executive and the legislature, uh, others ask you know, questions about the ability of uh, these arms of government to actually carry out checks and balances on each other. How do you see uh, this play out in the days ahead? Well, I expect that the Tenth Assembly will be very independent of the executive what will form a very cordial working relationship with the executive because Nigeria needs to move forward and for that to happen we need a handshake between our legislature, our legislative arm of government and the executive arm of government. They need to find a middle ground. The years we spent bickering have slowed down the development that this country should have experienced over the last 24 years of our democracy. So we need to find a diplomatic way of them working together while ensuring that nobody uh, looks to give Nigeria the short end of the stick. At the end of the day, I expect that uh, having emerged, uh, Senator Apabio and um, Right Honorable Tajiri Abbas will come together with the executives and find a way to ensure that Nigerians, at the end of the day, are the ultimate beneficiaries of this, 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 these decisions or whatever decisions will be made. I expect them to uh, um, pass laws and uh, you know promote bills that will uh, better the lives of uh, Nigerians across um, all walks of life, across uh, religious, and, uh, religious and ethnic divides, I expect them to, again, build systemically on the progress that we made by, by the Ninth Assembly. And I expect them to surpass the Ninth Assembly. And I'm particularly very keen on watching out for Honorable Tajin Abbas. This was a man who, uh, during his time as a, uh, a member of the House of Assembly, before he became speaker, had passed, ha had been involved in the passing of 40, 74 bills. So now, as, as speaker, I expect that if that would transcend, uh, uh, would trickle down to members of the House of Reps, and Nigerians would at the end of the day experience, uh, you know, incremental growth in the next four years. It's a exciting time for Nigerians, mm. and I expect that they will do their jobs without fear or favor. Uh, and but at the end of the day, ensuring that they don't become uh, cantankerous to the house to the executive. But most Nigerians expect yes. that an active house is one that is always at the head or is always bickering. With the executives, we don't want to see all that. Anymore. What we want to see is an harmonious working relationship between these two, to the benefit of the everyday Nigerian on the street. Political analyst Ahmed Mustafa, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. For that uh, program today, watch a repeat.